here. I'm gonna go here. Streaming now. YouTube.com slash Michael Malice official. Okay. Copy tweet. <sighs> All right, guys, give me a second. I'm just putting this up on Facebook and then we can have a nice little chat. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, it's really kind of annoying because um, my troll tweet is going wide right now and all these uh, galaxy brains, including people who follow me, are like, you don't know what fascism means! And it's like, yeah, okay. And I have to go do this. Okay. Um, I'm gonna talk about the Joker in a bit once we get 100 people in here. I've got my monster. Mm. This is garbage. Um... I wonder how m I think it's doing pretty well. Um, Joker is, uh, from my understanding. Oh, should I show you guys these, um, these pens that I, uh, spite funded? I'll show you the pens. Uh, we're gonna have a hundred people here in a second, and then I can talk about the movie, um, and talk about some other stuff. Okay, we got a hundred people here. Okay, so, it's tough. So the spite funding thing, right? It is tough, it's tough, to find things that are of limited utility, but also cost money. Because uh, if five, if 20 people throw five bucks at you, that adds up to $100. So it's gotta be, the point of spite funding on Twitter is it has to be money that is wasted. Tell them to add off, you are a fashionista. What? I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, add off your fashionista. I don't, Jim, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. All right. So I'm like, all right, I got my seven shaving brushes. And then I always had my, um, these pens. So these are the only pens I wrote with for a very long time. Like I think my entire adult life. And they don't make them anymore. So they're very 80s to me. A big, now they make them with a clear stem, which I hate. So I had a stack of these, and I always used these. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm an author. I can use cool pens. So the first one I got spite funded, paid for by you guys, was this one, which I talked about on um, what's the latest addition to Denim Collection. I won't root for a bad guy. <laughs> Denim, I, I have my 30 pairs. So uh, the Naked and Famous guys got me a pair for my birthday in July made of cashmere, part cashmere. Um, but I'm not, um, I've got my 30 pairs. So uh, this is, I talked about this on Nightshade. This, they didn't do that much with the pen itself. It's not a very creatively designed pen. There's an animal called Stellar Sea Cow, which was like a manatee relative that lives in the ocean. It lived in the Commander Islands between Alaska and Russia. They discovered it in like 1742. You were spot on a few weeks ago. Grabbing him is assault. What? I don't. I don't know. What? What? I, I, am I? Am I? Am I getting trolled? I don't know what any of you guys are talking about today. I need more monster in me. So stellar sea cow, manatee relative. Uh, was and it was hunted to extinction within 30 years. This is made out of one of its bones. So that was my first spite funded thing. That was pen. And I also then got oh was that you or Ben making the argument? What argument? Grabbing who? I'm sorry. Hi Michael. Sorry things didn't work out with my museum. Still love your work and support you. Thank you so much Joseph. Um, I'm get, I have my own museum. <laughs> All right. This is this is made out of a mammoth's tooth, molar specifically, which is really cool. And then this, I'm going to talk about this on Nightshade, I think, tomorrow. 
Read my super chat, Malice. Okay. It's, you don't have to yell. Um, these, this is made of Fordite, which is the most Ayn Rand I, uh, like material on Earth. Fordite, also known as Detroit Agate, it's made from, I don't know if you guys can see. Let me, yeah, I think like that's a good one. This is from a Corvette factory. So over the years, as the cars are spray painted, it makes layers and layers of paint. It won't let me say fuck, so I tried F. Okay, wait, what? I, I, I'm so confused. What is going on? Tell them to fuck off. You are a fashionista. Tell who to fuck off? I don't... Okay. So Fordite, right? <laughs> so over the years, the paint makes all these layers. And then they take that material... And you can make stuff with it. So this is from a Corvette factory. It's years of paint. You could even it's like a tree line like the, the tree rings, right? So that's kinda cool. And it's a nice pen. So I've got one my eye and one more pen, and that is it. Uh, I also have another Fordite pen. Uh, let me get that one. It'll take me 30 seconds. Hi Franklin. Back in the compound days of your welcome, you used to have episodes where you take Collins. Would you ever be up to do something like that again? Um Probably, at some point, it's not. Uh, or uh, here's the thing: on your welcome, when I do the shows live, we have the the chat room for subscribers to gas. This is a good way to do call-ins. I I don't like uh, to interact. At least I don't like call-ins because a lot of times people on the phone don't know how to talk. They freeze up, and there's a lot of pauses, and it's really annoying. And it's hard for me as the host to keep the convo moving. Because then they all clam up. It's 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 a thing. You know what I mean? Let me show you the other Fordite pen. I'll be back in literally 30 seconds. All right. So, yeah, there's a lot of these um, people. I love the internet that it makes all these... Um, People who are like handymen and like craftsmen just sell their stuff. And it's just some, this is some, some retired guy in Michigan or, or Wisconsin. He threw this one for free. He said, just show your friends. I'm like, all right. So this is actually Fordite from a Ford plant. And you can see it's a very different type of Fordite as the Corvette one. Um, let me see if I can get a good shot of it. So you can see what it looks like. It's on my Instagram. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just I just love when people are creative and you know make stuff and it, it kind of means something when you have it so thanks to all you guys for spite funding all this crap uh okay so let's talk about the joker movie um a lot of times i'm a troll no question i'm a big troll i like trolling a lot of times, oh, we could also talk about. Did we talk about Toronto? I don't think we talked about Toronto. Uh, a lot of times, uh, people think I hate this term contrarian. Um, or like they like I will say, there's a certain type of person who says things just to be like edgy or controversial, and that's what the word contrarian means to me. And I hate that. I I really hate that, and I don't. Uh, like, I, I hate it when people perceive me in that way. So, I'm about to say something. I mean it very sincerely, and I'll explain why. I don't think the Joker is, I don't mean the movie, I mean in comic books, a good character. I, I think it's, he's an annoying character, and here's why. Everyone, you know, ever since Alan Moore, I guess, in the 80s, like, he's been created to be like, oh, this, like, spirit of chaos, and here's the opposite of Batman. And it's like, if anything, a spirit of chaos is the opposite of Superman. Batman is not this kind of, like, logic, law, you know what I mean? Like, like, Boy Scout. Superman's the Boy Scout. Batman is certainly someone who uses chaos to sow fear. Feeling the hair tonight. Thank you, Nicole. That's very nice. And... We don't understand the Joker's motivation. It doesn't make sense in that world. Because the Batman universe is very different from the Superman universe. The Batman universe is much more based in realism, right? It, so, it, 
the Joker is not a realistic character in those terms. Everyone's all scared of him. It's like, a lot of these villains are, are extremely murderous. Why are they scared of him? Because at any moment he could kill you? So can all of them. So it, it, that really annoys me. I thought a death in the family where he, where he kills Robin was very well done. I'll, I'll, I'll grant that. And it made sense. But uh, again, the fact that he's this like mass murderer and he's always around, allowed to run around. And if he's this like complete loon, how is the world's greatest detective not able to get a hold on him? Like the Riddler is smart right the penguin's a gangster like it, it, back in the day all the villains were interchangeable now they've kind of defined like the joker like what ba what's his background we don't know what does that mean what does that mean in that world it doesn't i i really and the character is given this um significance that i don't think this is i'm getting totally autistic and i'm fine with it i don't think the backstory and the world uh um uh kind of backs up this character's perception. I remember there was a, a miniseries called um, Villains United, right? And the premise of this miniseries in DC Comics was all the supervillains were exiled to another planet. And all the supervillains on this planet were scared of the Joker. And I'm like, they're not. Like, if you're someone who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman, you're not scared of this dude, no matter how crazy he is. Because at the you, you could kill him. It, it doesn't make it it really bothers me and it bothers me how he's so uh, even hugo strange who's not a major batman uh, antagonist to me is a much more a better example of the opposite of batman right because he's also bright he's crafty he's educated he uses his intelligence but it, it, you know the joker it, it's not okay so that's that's um one thing and it would work also better to me. This, You know what? This is what would work. It would work if we were shown that the Joker actually scares Batman. Like, that would be like, okay, this is the one guy Batman's actually afraid. Hey, Michael, was wondering if you have a Bible favorite Bible, Bible verse. I do. Uh, how far have you fallen, O star of morning, that swept a third of the sky with your tail? I forget which one that is, but that's the one. Hi, Michael. I'm 21 and recently started my business. You have kept me sane throughout the whole thing. Well, that's a lie. And it would be a great pleasure for me to send you one. It, it's a Swiss-made Bitcoin watch. What is a Bitcoin watch? I, I, w w hold on. Swiss. Swiss. I, wait. I, okay, hold on. What is this? What is a Bitcoin watch? What is going on? Is it a watch with a Bitcoin symbol? Like, I don't, I don't, what is, what is happening? What is, what is, okay, I don't, I don't, I, I, I would, sure, if, I mean, I can't really wear watches, because my wrists are like, like, like a little girl, they're like ridiculously thin, like, I'll show you against what, I don't know what, a uh, phone, like, they're really small. Um, so anyway, yeah, if the Joker was written in such a way that Batman, like, is unnerved about him, and Batman gets emotional, and Batman, like, loses... The voice is what got me. We've had a bevy of public figures in recent years who have had their genitalia described on national television by people who alleged sexual assault. That was Ben Shapiro! That was Ben Shapiro! That wasn't me! I am gonna have to get those... I'm gonna get those Margaret Thatcher voice lessons. I, I have it listed to do, and I'm gonna do it. As an ANCAP, I'm not an ANCAP, um, what is your view on national defense? I'm in favor of all kinds of defense against aggression as an anarchist. Uh, I don't know what you're really asking there, and I don't know why ANCAP is in capitals. <laughs> Wait, do you think the CAP stands for capitalization? As an anarchist who believes in capitalization. <laughs> all right. Uh, Bitcoin watch, time is kept in the public ledger. What would Hamilton thought of Bitcoin? What would Rothbard thought of Bitcoin? Not as an ex investment, would they have been, would they have been interested in it conceptually? They obviously both would be very interested in it. Uh, I think ha Hamilton, I think Rothbard would, would be hardcore 
BTC guy. He'd be a hodler. Although he would not like the Bitcoin people. Thanks, Greg. You got me. Hamilton, um, I I really hate it when people are like, well, the Founding Fathers in 2019 would clearly think this. Hamilton thought the national debt was a blessing because just like the EU and Brexit, it made it so the states can't really separate themselves out again, right? It's an asymmetry. At the same time, Hamilton was the Founding Father who understood and appreciated finance the most. So... I think he would have been a... I, I do not think he would have been an advocate of Leviathan. I think he was a nationalist, but not a at all a progressive. Um, and I think he would very... And he was very much a property rights person. That's what led to his elitism. It was based on respect for property rights. So, yeah, he would have liked anything that helps people with finance. So I think he would have uh, enjoyed it. But I can't speak for him, of course. Um... Oh, I would 100% spite fund Thatcher voice lessons. It's not spite funding if it has utility, though. Can you quickly explain how you differ from ANCAPs? Sure. I like all forms of anarchism. Um, I like Emma Goldman. I like Murray Rothbard. As long as the flag's black, I like it. And I am not well-read on Murray Rothbard, so when you say ANCAP, it sounds like you're a Rothbard acolyte, so I don't want to make that implication. Um, I want to hear about T.O. and the competition with Montreal. Sure, we're going to get to that. I'll talk about Toronto. Um, but and i got to tell you guys something else. And, and let's talk about Hamilton. We'll get back to the Joker. Any of you who are libertarians or ANCAPs, uh, you know how like you look at boomers and they'll attack the demon rats, the Democrats, or the Democrats, and they'll be like, oh, you just got to vote Republican, and you sit there and you're just like, oh, God. You, like, we already... And, and, and not only is it, like, stupid... You could be like, we had Republican Congress and a Republican president. You could make, you can easily make the argument that's better than the alternative. You could easily make the argument that that's preferable, that that's good, that you like it. Fine. That's 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 a separate issue. You can't sit there and be like, well, this was government at its best. You can't make that case, right? So, the same people who understand this vis-a-vis Republicans and Democrats really try to make Hamilton into this like Woodrow Wilson figure both politically and personally and it is ridiculous in in, in every way uh wilson was a good southerner so i highly encourage you all to read chernow's biography of hamilton and when you read it you'll be like oh and here's the other thing the, the the autistic screeching people who can't wrap their heads around like oh well this person uh was horrible politically so their biography can't be good it's like Teddy Roosevelt's my always example. Teddy Roosevelt's an awesome badass. This is not in dispute. He's a really evil, reprehensible president. That's all. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, that's my Hamilton thought. Joker. This monster's really working, guys. So I don't like the Joker as a character. I do think... And again, they say, oh my god, you're saying this. I think Cesar Romero is probably the best Joker. Because that l- character was organic to that world at the time. And he he played it off well. So that's, okay, that's that. Let's talk about the movie. Um, there are a lot of negative reviews... And a lot of people are knee-jerk reacting to the reviews. The reviews that I've seen that are critical aren't critical in the way people think. Have you planned, have you read or planned to read Snowden's book? I have not, and I do not plan to, no. Um, the, the criticism of this movie is that and I don't want to. Sp- I'm gonna make it a point not to spoil it. It's. I'll, I'll let me just open with this. It's a good movie. Teddy's the original Rough Rider. Yeah, it's a good movie. I I totally recommend it. Um, it does not have to be a Joker movie. Uh, there's a few elements about the Wayne family that I, I were tacked on and don't need to be there. It's good as a movie. I I think it would be very hard 
um, to watch it and not think this was a well done movie. And I really don't like most superhero movies. It was different, which is very rare for a movie. It's something unique and original. I think that's well done. Um, as a New Yorker, it re- and who remembers pre Giuliani in New York, and I don't remember it when it was as bad as they portrayed Gotham. It does a great job, a really great job, of portraying that sense where you were never safe. And I, I read this book called um, Confessions of a Hoaxer by Alan Abel, who was like kind of a troll, and he, he's just not funny. The book was excruciating. And he talks about in the 70s in New York, it wasn't just muggings. Like everyone he knew had their house broken into. Like everyone. We can't, and there were all these jokes in these sitcoms at the time that someone would be knocking at the door and be, hold on a minute, and they'd have to open up eight locks and a chain. Teddy was like rocket engines for progressism. That's true. Still an awesome human being on a biographical level. A, a fascinating human being on a biographical level. So that the, the movie where like people get the shit kicked out of them for no reason all the time, that vibe of, thank God, long gone New York is captured very, very well. And that energy in the streets, which I caught the tail end of growing up, was really done well. So in terms of like setting a scene... I thought it was excellent. Any thoughts on North Korea Talks Breakdown? That's a long conversation, Duck. Uh, And it's funny, you watch some movies from that. uh, People don't remember or forget that it was just like um, late seven. Do you think, okay, slow down, guys. Do you think Bitcoin may be deployed by our rulers as a step toward a cashless society? with an authoritarian bent to be able to control through money. I do not think that will be the case, Colby. I think Bitcoin's the way it's set up is far too effective uh, to be used in that way. And if it were tried to be used in that way, some other coin would take its place. Have you read The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis? Uh, I think I read it many years ago. I'm not a Lewis fan. Uh, I really loathe C.S. Lewis because he has a very cynical, low opinion of human nature. And just because most people are, are crap does not mean that is the norm. I do not think the popularity of something or the frequency of something is the norm of something. Uh, so that is something I... However, his whole point, there's two things in there. I don't know if it's in there or his theology that he gets right is that that Satan is the equal of Archangel Michael, is not the equal of God, which is a very good observation. Um, one of the chapters of my book opens with a C.S. Lewis quote. The Narnia books are, are you know, hugely int- awesome for me. Um, and I, I do think, I don't remember it that well, but I think this is his point, and this is also, they taught us this in Yeshiva, that the devil is, isn't this guy with a pitchfork. He's very seductive. And I think this is why it's easy for me often to red pill Christians because they understand the nature of evil, that evil exists, and that evil's not going to be coming down the street with a big sign that says, I'm evil and I want to kill people. Evil is going to seem, you know, back in the day it would seem pious. Today it would seem edgy or cool. So this is something I, I, I did the Babylon Bee podcast. Uh, I encourage you all to listen to it because they got it. Those guys really got it. So I, um, I do not agree with the Christian ethics at all. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't have contempt for them. But it's just really kind of interesting, our culture, where if you say, I don't agree with Christianity, it comes off, understandably, as like, I hate Christians. No, I just don't agree. Uh, but so th- that's kind of my big disagreement with C.S. Lewis. He's not as bad as Chesterton, who I really don't like. Uh, okay. Can you name a bad guy that you would like to root for? I mean, a million. J.R. Ewing, Skeletor, The Time Trapper, uh, Hamilton. Um, who else are the bad? Me. Uh, I, I always root for the villains. They're, 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 they're amazing. Um, what about Tolkien then? Oh my god, in suffer- I could not get through it. I just can't get through it. Slow down. What kind of Soviet Jew are you? Lapsed. 
The problem with comic book villains, comic villains want to be evil. True villains implement their good vision. This is what makes them evil. Absolutely, Thomas. Yeah, this is why one of my little tweets that I've been doing now for these uh, prog journalists is just asking them, have you ever considered the possibility that you're one of the bad guys? And this is one of the big reasons I'm an anarchist. I don't know enough to kind of figure out my own life. I make mistakes. So I'm going to impose my vision on people I've never met by force. I can't wrap my head around that. Okay, great. So back to the back to the Joker movie. Um, I think whenever anytime someone does an outside the box performance, everyone's like, "Oh my god, this is the best thing ever." If I say if someone is portrayed as seven feet tall, and you say Joker shown Keynesian scarcity, thanks income tax. If Joker if, if someone is portrayed as seven feet tall and you say, actually, they're six foot nine, people flip out, right? So I'm going to say, I do, Joaquin Phoenix performances was great. It was not as great as everyone is saying. That's all I'm saying. Again, he's six eight. He's not seven foot. I'm not saying he's short. Six eight is a very tall person. I'm just saying it's not... I, I can't wrap my head around it. And here's why. When I was in college, I took a course called Abnormal Psychology. And the reason I took this course was once a week, we went to the loony bin to work with people who are institutionalized. And I was young and naive. Now I'm old and naive. And I was of the belief, and this is very stupid to say, but you know, I was 19 then. I was of the belief that they would be like The Mask, the movie The Mask with Jim Carrey, that it'd be a wacky. They were not. And I don't know how many people have been around, any of you guys have been around someone who has like mental illness to the point to understand yourself. <laughs> yeah, I looked in the mirror, but there was nothing there. I don't know how many of you have been around people who are mentally ill to the point where they're institutionalized. It is so viscerally disturbing and I can't even describe it your brain is on is on you cannot relax it is like you're it's it, it kind of felt like being in North Korea when I landed there it's like you don't belong here warning 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 the whole time so I did not get that vibe from Joaquin Phoenix in the movie like he was weird I didn't get the vibe that, like, I couldn't be around him. And if he was giving off that vibe, many of the things in the story wouldn't have happened. So that is some, a criticism. Um, what else? Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. I just say it's it's a good move. Okay, so the, 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 why I, the reviewers are correct. So as many of you have gleaned, and I'm not spoiling anything, um... The movie's trying to make a case about, oh, how we treat the mentally ill and we discard them. And I tweeted out that everything the movie's trying to say was said and done better by Fight Club, which is something I stand by. Hillary gets that vibe. What? Yeah. Um, on the one hand, sure. Like, if someone, if someone is, like, so profoundly mentally ill that they have the capacity to become the Joker... There's nothing that can be done for them. There's just not like it, it like at a certain like Terry Schiavo, the woman. What movie did you not? So the movie did not give you North Korea vibes. It did not. It gave me New York City vibes. A sociopathic robot vibe. I've never met her. I have met a sociopath, and it was very very disturbing. I don't know what a Hillary would be like in person. I bet you Hillary in person would be extremely charming. I'm not gonna spoil it. So. Um, I lost my, my uh, 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 train of thought. Yeah, it, it, it's... It, I completely lost my train of... It's Terry Schiavo. So at a certain point, she was the woman who has was brain dead. They took her off a feeding tube. They killed her in Florida. This is in the 90s, I believe, or 2000s. At a certain point, when the brain is so far gone, it, it's not society's fault. And even though this movie is being pitched as, like, you know, right wing and blah, blah, blah... The argument that it's society's fault that someone becomes a killer is an old school hard left position. 
It's like the reason people are rapists or they're rioting or they're a killer. They never had a chance. They never had an opportunity. It's 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 not their fault. What what chance do they have? It's like okay, that's cool, but it's not um, something I find cogent. Uh, so that um, you know, the unreliable narrator is is they could have played it up more. Because if you're going to show the Joker's point of view and it's just like, okay, this guy does, is not in touch with reality, um, that is an interesting thing uh, that they could have experimented with. Um, and there's this one scene where he's in a place, I don't want to spoil it, and then it just cuts to him leaving and it's not clear what just happened. And again... Obviously, a lot of this ambiguity is intentional. My perspective is that they didn't want to show him uh, killing the kid. And that it actually did happen. But that's a, a separate argument. Anyway, I do... Um, so what you're saying is this movie is the embodiment of your catchphrase, conservatism is progressivism driving the speed limit. I am not saying that. I'm saying the criticisms are kind of accurate because if the movie is trying to say, well, we should take more care of crazy people or else they become mass murderers, I don't agree. And it's not even clear that that's the case that the movie is trying to say that. So it, it's, it's uh, I don't know. Um, I, I would just say Fight Club is better in every single way. Then, then, and it's very, very similar in message, um, and and the characters are more sympathetic and empathetic, in, more interesting plot. Um, but it was very well done. Uh, some of my friends thought it was like the top five movie they've ever seen. I don't, I, I don't understand that at all. Um, uh, the violence was done very well. The violence was done uh, very well. Um, there's this one scene: "Is Killing Joke good?" And should I read it? I think Death in the Family is better. Um, and again, if they're trying to make this... If the whole point of the Joker is he's this spirit of nihilism, this character is not a nihilist in any way. This character has values and, and, and aspirations. So even that doesn't make sense. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Um, and death in the yeah death in the family. What what are the other good Joker stories? I think that's that's the good one. Okay. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? A Toronto. Let's talk about Toronto. I want to thank Greg again. Greg, my friend Eric passed away. Mm, very sad. Oh uh, God. I I'll tell you guys something I just learned about Eric. I'll read it to you. This was very. Uh, um, um, let me see. This was pretty funny. For those who, don't, you, uh, let me find it. Here we go. Eric was the one who would rip all my TV appearances and put them on YouTube, and they're still there. And his good friend told me here. Let me read this. I want to read it verbatim. It's important. Okay, even though Eric ripped all of your shows and put them on YouTube, he hadn't had the time to watch most of them. A few months ago, he, he said he told our friend about this, and that friend created an intricate Google Doc with links in date order to every one of my shows and live streams. Eric managed to watch everything I've produced just a few months before he passed away. Now, that is a tragedy, and that is really 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 sad uh what a waste um so anyway so greg was like all right here's cash you have to spend it on making memories with friends so i did it to buy a ticket to toronto with a few buddies uh it was two of their birthdays um it was so here are my thoughts on toronto i, it, uh, I always said toronto is my second favorite city i can't say that anymore I had an amazing, amazing time. Montreal's better. 
other than the architecture. The Toronto architecture, I think, is much better than Montreal because it's got that Jane Jacobs diversity. It Since I was last there, it's getting a little um, uh, Milwaukee. Like, there's this mall there that is gigantic. I, it's got some name. I knew every single store. Like, here, here's Coach. Here's Banana. Here's this. Like, why am I here? Like, I'm in Canada. Give me Winners. Give me Simons something anything so that was annoying um the vibe there was a lot of it felt economically depressed like that this is a city that is regressing and where it's not regressing and when it's um building it feels like uh again like like soulless so that i love how you could walk it so those are the criticisms I love how you could walk it. The people are awesome. You could be as obnoxious as hell. Um, that's fun. Uh, I went back to Brooklyn Pizza, which I shouted out on Joe Rogan. That was cool. Um, but I don't know. I just thought Montreal was better. It ran the table on it. Like, it really, really did. Uh, here's what really bothered me. This really bothered me. Okay, here's time for autistic screeching. When we were in Montreal, I stumbled upon this awesome t-shirt store, very Brooklyn, where they made their own shirts. And to me, the mark of a good t-shirt is that they use more than one color. And they had all these cool like screen printed shirts and I got one and I, I, tr I treasure it. I went to, Quebec, to, Montreal, to Toronto. I'm like, where can I go to find a shirt designed by like a Toronto artist like you know threadless for toronto there's not any in the whole city and there were stores that had prints and like hand like you know like canvas bags or cards there was a lot of creativity in the city not one fucking t-shirt we went to like the district with all the flea market stuff we went to there's a ton of make your own t-shirt stores there were like 10 of those not one indie t-shirt place there was a sticker store I got a sticker. So that really rankled. So yeah, Toronto was much better. My your my pleasure, my air, your piggy bank. It was yeah. So uh it's it's Montreal all the way. And I hate to say it because it's French. And that's where GSP is from. Um what else can we talk about? Oh, this is if progressivism had deities, who would they be? Progressivism does have deities. They're secular saints. It's people like Martin Luther King. It's people like Harriet Tubman. Um, uh, they beatify people all the time. Um, who else do they invoke? Those are probably the big ones. They, they're not very creative. They kind of, you know, kind of have a very narrow worldview. So they'll stick to the same. Oh, um, it sticks to the same people over and over. Uh... So yeah, they, they don't really know, um, those, those would kind of be the, 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 the big ones, I, I would say. Okay, um, what else did I want to dis discuss? Uh, I don't know, I think that's kind of largely everything. Hmm. It's been a long week. It's been a long week and fucking... Did he write back? Nope. Uh, have you read McIntyre's After Virtue? I don't think I have. You know, I haven't seen that. I'm sure when I see it. Oh, no, I've not read this. I have not read this. But it sounds like I would agree with it. Um, stupid question but there are lots of jokes about you being queer are you <laughs> so happy you like Montreal better now I was stupefied before I'm man enough to admit when I change my opinion so yeah um, it was I, I mean it, they're both great cities though I would go back to Toronto in a second 
And I'd go back to, I love Canada. I love, love, love Canada. I enjoy the kids say the darndest things tweets. Yeah, I, I Kid Logic is really funny. It's really funny because to me, Kid Logic is great because it shows that kids are using their brains. So you can do the, you can backtrace what their logic is, and you're like, this is a mind at work, and it's it's fascinating to watch. Um, so yeah. Um, I haven't been to the movies before the Joker. I've been going through your backlog of red-eye appearances that I missed. What a great format for you. Would love to see you hosting that type of show. That's not a bad idea. How about Nick's vote for Hitler Sarwak guy? I gotta get Dave Smith on the show to do, um, um, to do the debriefing. I gotta do that. I'm gonna have Dave Smith on. Because me and him had a good chat. I was in the studio. He was there. We, we walked and talked. Um, yeah, that, it's always fun when people have the crossover shows, I think. Uh, this Tuesday we have Big J, which is great. Um, he, it was a good interview. Uh, joined late, unfortunately, thanks for the Twittertainment. I have so much fun on Twitter. Like, I can't even tell you guys. I want to share a link to photo of the ridiculous security de detail at my local Angelica, but YouTube won't let me. Did your theater have one? No, and I was in Times Square. Oh God, I was triggered. Thank you for reminding me. Oh God, I was, okay, okay, autistic screeching again. I caught it from Greta. There was a guy outside the theater. This is the AMC 25, 42nd Street between 7th and 8th, Times Square. This is where the joke would have taken place, you know, 40 years ago. And he's dressed as a joker, he got the makeup on, and he had a fucking umbrella. And I'm like, that is not, that's the penguin. I was pissed. Talk about Hong Kong some more on here. Not enough on Nightshade. I don't have anything else to say about Hong Kong. I only, so I can't. I have no other information. How am I supposed to be a good homo without a Twitter troll to look up to? Well, Aaron, I would recommend you keep sucking dick until you get to the bottom of that. Actually, can we get that doc with all your links? It's not my document. Someone made it for Eric. Um, but if you go to uh, michaelmalice.com, like all my show links are there. Um, yeah. You, oh, here's something else. This I, I, I gave blood Friday. And this, is, this really triggered me on Twitter. I call an Uber, going to party yesterday. And the guy calls me, which I hate. You don't need to call me. And he's across the street. He had parked. He's like, hey, I'm behind the food truck. I'm like, okay, cool. I go in the car. He double parked, went into the food truck directly ahead of him to get food. And I'm like, all right. Like, I didn't really care. I kind of cared, but didn't care too much. Like, I don't want to be like too much of my mom who's really big on like, meh, meh, meh. And I wrote about that on Twitter. I go, hey, I'm in the car. drive, And someone just replied with the, the Venn diagram. This and things that happened. Meaning, like, this didn't happen. And I'm sitting... I blocked him immediately. Because if someone's calling me a liar, there's no point in talking. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, why would I make this up? And how is this even believable? Unbelievable, I mean. This is not like, oh my god, there's a murder. And, and you know, the, the, the guy went to get food while I'm in the car. Is this really, like, impossible or even unlikely? It's just weird. North Korea talks break down. Is Kim helping Trump for re-election, or is he helping him to look strong for his own people? What are your thoughts on North Korea and Trump 2020? Duck, this is a long conversation. Uh, I have to do my homework. I will talk about it on, on Nightshade. We don't know. This is just happening today. We don't know how much of this is on front. I just ordered a North Korea book today, by the way. Um, I will have a live stream discussing it at length once I've done my homework because I have to be careful when I talk about this issue. I, uh, I don't think North Korea is helping or hurting Trump vis-a-vis -vis 2020 right now. I think it's gotten very much a secondary issue, especially given uh, the, the impeachment talk. Was half joking about Red Square Girls and You're Welcome, but any interest? Yeah, I would love to, but they wouldn't do it. So I, I, I would absolutely love to. Anyway, giving blood. Yeah. Uh, 
in all seriousness, like it's a great way. Uh, I'm sure when you're unemployed, I've been unemployed in the past, and it's awful because you feel every day is wasted. Like you make your phone calls, you send out your resumes, no response, and you're like, oh my god, this is gonna be forever. It's like when you're single, right? You're like, ah. Uh. If you give blood or go to the gym, when your brain starts bugging out on you, you could say, my day's not wasted. I helped save a life today. And it would calm you down. So it's here's the process. You go in. They fill out a questionnaire. This Oh, the other thing, two, three dickheads are like, it takes half an hour at least to do the paperwork. Not for me. And someone, it, someone's like, you're being disingenuous. I'm like, okay, go, go fuck yourself. Um, you go in, you fill a questionnaire. Are you are you an escort? Have you ever done uh, um, uh, IV drugs? No. They take you to an, uh, a, a next the, the other guy. He does a blood pressure. Then they take iron from your fingertip, and I was scared about that one. Literally, didn't feel it. He just did it, and and it was done. I I, I know I did as a kid, and it hurt. I I literally didn't even know know when he did it. They did it. Um, then they sit you down, and I've, I've had blood tests, which I don't like. They put the, the spike in your vein, just like um, um, Velvet Underground, Lou Reed. And I thought I could listen to my music and not look at it and not think about it. But the guy told me to like, sit there. He gave me this like foam like stress doll and pump it. And I'm just and like pump it every five seconds, and it was hard to pump after a while because also you're kind of getting a little lightheaded. But I did it, and it felt gross. It didn't hurt. Um, but I left, and I'm like, you know what? I'm all positive. I'm really glad I did it. So, and if the choice is in all seriousness, like between voting and this, it takes about as much time. And you have you're if you're someone's at a point where they need blood, this isn't a casual thing. So this is a profoundly positive impact you can make. This is my PSA. You don't have to do it. I'm just saying if you're feeling stressed or depressed, this is something you can do that will take you less than an hour of your day, and you can lean back and be like, all right, I have some perspective now. Have you heard of Nick Fuentes? Of course. Vox Day thinks Jordan Peterson is a crypto globalist. I can't speak on that. Have you read Jordan Ethics? I have not. Um, I know Nick. I think he follows me. Uh, we, I met him briefly in D.C. Um, I don't got beef with him. I'm pretty sure he doesn't beef with me. Well, your blood can't save anyone. Can you imagine waking up from a good boomer NPC life to your thoughts? Yeah, I can imagine waking up with my thoughts. I do it every day. Come on. Come on. Um, I, don't, I don't know much about Jordan Peterson at all. Like at all, um, I I think anyone who my very visceral understanding of him, anyone who's big on helping young people, especially young males, get their lives on a better track, is something I support broadly. But specifically, I can't speak on any of his uh, um, his views. I know that if me and him, I watched his interview with Milo. I think that's the only thing I've ever watched with him. I thought that I thought Milo did a great job there um milo you know usually does a great job if not always uh i i would i think the internet would love it if me and jordan peterson sat down that would be a lot of fun because i i think he's very um not very i think he has a sense of humor but he's not a humorist and i don't think he would know what to do with me and i would have fun tweaking him and he would be smart enough and canny enough to appreciate it but wouldn't be able to do anything about it so it would lead to a very uh, uh entertaining dynamic um, that's kind of my thoughts on um, uh, uh, Jordan Peterson. Um, okay, let me just check one thing quickly. One second, guys. Oh, I, I got it. I, this is what I want to know. Let me tell you guys about the, the um, Terry Shepard episode because I was really proud of that one. Uh, so Terry is a Green Beret, total badass, can kill you with his hands, all this other good stuff. Right? Wait, okay, well, hold on a second. Wait, did I miss? Okay, hold on. Uh, from Boomer to your thoughts in an instant, it's like the whole bottle. Go full Greta. <laughs> 
How dare you? I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Keep killing it. Thank you, Tyler. Oh, an unsuspected norm with my thoughts. Yeah, I, 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 it's like taking the red pill. Yeah. It, you know what it would be, Greg? It would be flowers for Algernon. <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? I, God, I, I'm, my brain is, I am exhausted. I am exhausted. Um, Terry Shepard. Okay. So, there is a, there's a Terry Shepard story I can't tell where he, like, validated me and made me look like a total badass in front of somebody else, which I really, really liked. Uh, and it was really one of these cool moments in my life because he's such a fucking alpha badass. Um, I really, really admire and respect people like him. Um, like, guys who are, like, really really fucking tough but also wear their heart in their sleeve that is to me kind of this kind of uh, like acme of being a guy right where you can be very in touch with your feelings and not a, 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 but also handle yourself okay no no you didn't oh, you didn't even get the omar joke greg none of you got the okay so i wanted to ask terry you know 9 11 stuff right and we're recording it. It was taped. And I'm sitting there with, I, I told my producer, Nate, I go, have the laptop in front of me as if we have the chat room. Terry knew we were being taped, that it was not live. And I'm pretending, I'm like, how do I ask him questions about how to be a good terrorist? I go, okay, I'll pretend it's Ilhan Omar in the chat room. So I go, the first time, because usually what we do with the three questions, and this is peeking behind the curtain, and I... If you reveal the, the troll on YouTube, I will delete your comment and block you. Um, we'll do the interview, and then we'll do the three questions, and then we edit those back in. And I only asked the question once. We use the same exact footage to make it more surreal. Of course I got it. Are you serious? Mm, that, you're, you're typing in red. That seems to me like you're triggered and wrong. Maybe if it was in French. Okay. Data says otherwise, Greg. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god, I've never, all caps. Ah, Ray, Ray chat. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Ah! <laughs> Calm down, Fredo. Calm down, Fredo. This is what I, my face is on Twitter when people get triggered, by the way. Now you know. So I asked him, the, I, and I did them in order of increasing offense. So I'm like, all right, the 9-11 one is going to be last. So the, the first one I asked him about driving a truck, and this is actually, a, it was a sincere question in a sense. Is it better to, if you're going to plow over civilians, to do it with a truck that's going slowly this is red. Don't miscolor me. Jesus Christ, Greg. Thank you so much. Miss, it's miscolor. It's one of S. Miss is two. Miscolor versus miscolor. Um. Oh, I, I Greg, I'm gonna pop on. I'll, I'll, I'll message you in a bit. Um. Anyway, so. Oh, so, so the first one, I, I, and I'm like, okay, what, what would be a better way? I still don't know a better way to kill a crowd. Is it a truck or this, this car going quickly, right? It's like the 500 ducks or the horse-sized duck, whatever that is. And the second one, I'm like, all right, the concert. If you're going to shoot up a concert. And he looked at me, and I said, okay, Omar from Minnesota again. And at that point, I thought he knew it's either a joke or that it's, I'm making an Ilhan Omar reference. And I thought he'd be upset or be like, okay, whatever, like eye rolling. And he didn't get it. Like he, he I talked to him later. And the last one, the 9-11 one, if you're going to have a box cutter to pu cut a pilot's throat, which brand should you use? So he thought it really was someone in the chat room and that I was just being, not, not an asshole, but like messing with him by letting this troll through. He did not get it was an Ilhan Omar reference at all. 
He did not think it was me. Actually, it's color. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, and he felt, he's like, oh my God, I feel so dumb. I go, Terry, you're not dumb. I'm just this good. And he's like, okay, that's, that's, that's fair. So I really was glad that I pulled that off. Cause I thought by the third time he would definitely be like, oh, okay, I got it. I get what you're doing. It's not funny. I don't think 9-11 is funny. And I'm like, I agree. 9-11 isn't funny. 22 Muslims died there. I was split between sending that Benjamin to young kids with autism for climate change but I went, decided against and went for you instead. Jake's on you. I'm an old man with autism for climate change. <laughs> um, so that is was the story with Terry. Great, great dude. Um, I, I, I thought that was one of my favorite episodes in a long, long, long time. Um, it, it, by the way, also, it's taking me everything I have not to dress as Justin Trudeau for Halloween on Nightshade. Like, I really, really want to do it. And I can't, but I really want to. Like, really bad. Because it would be so fucking funny. Like, I did it on fucking... Like, I did uh, the chocolate face on Ruben, which got cut, which they never released, but yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, it has been an hour. <laughs> Uh, I am going to, I, the other thing I think I'm going to do, should I do this? I'm think my mother's birthday is the 15th, which is next Tuesday, a week from this Tuesday. I'm thinking of having her as my guest on your welcome and then dubbing in her answers, having her answer in Russian. I think that might be fun, but she she'd, she'd have to play it straight. I don't know. I have to. I have to figure it out. Um, I th I, it's always funny for me when you see people's family. I think. I, I think it'll be a good birthday present for her. And I'll just. I'll. It'll be like Steve Brule. Just message. I'll just. Uh, um. Uh. What was your favorite part of this live stream? When Greg lost his shit. <laughs> uh. And have all these insane subtitles about, oh, I wish I'd aborted you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I still don't know who your father is. Well, I mean, I could really have a field day with it. My mom has a sharp, nasty tongue. She is a supervillain. She really, really is. There's a reason I have Joan Collins' photo for her in my phone. She can hang. Uh, like like res respect to her and she's crafty as fuck i think a lot of these russian ladies are crafty as fuck um and she's still pretty too she's like you know still like slim and whatever looks good your mom as a guest is awesome your mom Talk about <laughs> hmm I, I think i might do that okay I, I will call her you know what i should it's her birthday this is so this would be such a fun, it's such a malice thing to do for my show, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys could tell me that we look the same or we don't look the same. I think we do look the same, especially when I lose weight. When I, my face gets, when I gain weight, my face becomes my dad's. And when I lose it, it becomes my mom's. Do you have YouTube channel memberships? I don't know what those are. Get Jason Genova on, you're welcome. Well, Maybe when I put on some more mass. We'll have to do that. Okay, I'm going to bounce. Um, tomorrow we're going to have a fun nightshade, probably. Tuesday's Big J. Uh, this mom episode, I really want to do it. It doesn't have to be on her birthday. Okay, I will talk to you uh, soon. Uh, thanks for all the support. Um, there's nothing else. I, I, there's nothing, you hear, people guessing I'm su you super chatting yourself in chat has to be part of the live stream bingo. He's French. French. Um, let me think. I, and I also don't know I have anything left to fucking uh, uh, spite fund. So that is a situation. Have mom and dad in your welcome and ask them to get back together for the children. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not going to. Oh, that, that would never happen. 
Never, ever, ever. I should have my sister on, too. That would be fun. Uh, nah, she's basic. All right, I will talk to you all soon. Thank you all for the uh, uh, support. You are sweet dreams.